Hello everyone, my name is Harneet Saini. I am assistant professor in Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College. Today the topic of discussion is foresights and lattices. Right? So the first of all we will study about what are what is a foresight. A relation R on set S is called partial ordering or partial order if it is reflexive, anti-symmetric and transitive. A set S together with a partial ordering R is called a partial ordered set or a post set. Right? A set which is satisfying three properties that is reflexivity, anti-symmetric and transitive then it is a post set. Now let us uh, understand it with the help of example. Now show that the greater than or equal to is a partial ordering set on integers. Now let us take any integer x which is greater than equal to itself, right? That means if it is not greater it is equal to itself. That means it is satisfying the reflexive property. A number is, uh, an integer is related to itself, right? This means it is satisfying the reflexive property. Then with anti-symmetric property, if x is greater than equal to y, and y is greater than equal to x, this can only be possible if x is equal to y, the, according to the property of anti-symmetry. If x is not equal to y, then x is greater than y or y is greater than x, right? Th both of them cannot be true at a time. So, this property is satisfied in integers, so it is anti-symmetric. Last property is transitive. Transitive means if x is greater than equal to y and y is greater than equal to z, then x is greater than equal to z. So, all uh, the integers satisfy this property. So, all these three properties are satisfied with the integers. Then the greater than equal to sign, all the uh, integers that are satisfying this property are a post set, right? Now, what are hash diagrams? The now hash diagram is a diagrammatical uh, method to represent a poset, right? A hash diagram of a poset S is a diagram whose vertices, these vertices represent the elements of S. These elements of S are represented with the help of vertices, right? And, uh, and if Y is an immediate successor of X, in S, then an edge is or a line is drawn directed from X to Y. Like if 2 is related to 4, then there is a edge drawn in between these two vertices. Sometimes instead of drawing a line directed from X to Y, we take Y at a higher level than X and join X and Y by a straight line, right? So, if in this diagram, if 2 and 4, there is a line between 2 and 4 and 4 is, 4 is upper to 2, that means 2 is related to 4, right? Not 4 related to 2, it means 2 is related to 4, it is anti-symmetric. If 2 is related to 4, 4 is not related to 2. 2 is related to 4 means there is a relation between 2 and 4, right? Now, how to draw a let us take an example, how to draw an hash diagram of this, which the uh, operation is divides. Now, let us start from the first element, first element is 1, 1 we will keep in the bottom, we will start from 1, right. Next element is 2, now 1 divides 2, so we draw an edge from 1 to 2. Then comes 3, 2 does not divide 3, so we will these two elements are incomparable now. We will keep 3 here only, not above 2. Now, 1 divides 3, so we made a line between 1 and 3. The next element is 4. 4, 2 divides 4, 1 divides 4, then 4 we make it here. But 3 does not divide 4, so we will not make any line between 3 and 4. Next is 6. 6, th 6 is divided by 3, 1 right and 2 also. Then we will make an edge between 1 and 6 an indirect edge from 1 to 3 and 3 to 6. And here 3 divides 6, so 3 there is an edge between 3 and 6. 2 also divides 6, then we made an edge between 
2 and 6 also. Right? Next element is 8. Now, 8 is divided by 4 also, 2 also, 1 also. Right? Then we may, uh, created an vertex here 8. We joined 4 here. Now, 2 is connected to 8 through 4. 1 is connected to 8 through 2 and 4. Right? Now, the, these elements are not connected to 8 because these elements do not divide 8. Next element is 12. Now, 12 is divided by 6 also, 3 also, 1 also, 2 also, 4 also. Right? Then, we connect 6 to 12, 3 to 12 through 6, 1 to 12 through 3 and 6, and 2 to 12 through 2, 6 and 12, 4, we connect it directly to 12. This diagram shows that this is a uh, reflexive also, anti-symmetric also and transitive also. How? See, every element, every vertex is connected to itself means it is a reflexive. There is no need to draw a loop here. Then, it is transitive also. See, if 1 is related to 3, 3 is related to 6 and 1 is related to 6. Then, means we have no need to draw a line from 1 to 6. Then, it is anti-symmetry because the height shows the direction of the hash diagram. We cannot see the relation downwards, right? Now, the maximal and minimal elements in the hash diagram or in a post set we can say. Now, maximal element is the elements which they in which there are which are the highest in the hash diagrams means there is no parent node on that for that nodes. Now, see here. An element A belongs to S is maximal in the post set S if there is no B such that A is less than B, means A is below and B is above, and no such B exists, then A is a maximal element. Now, in this diagram, you can see that above 8 there is no number, and above 12 there is no number. So, 8 and 12 are the maximal elements here. Right? Similarly, for the minimal element, there should be no child node for that particular vertex. For example, 1. Now, 1 has the upper nodes. There are no lower nodes to 1. So, that means it is the below one. It can be, it has no child. So, that means it is a minimal element. Greatest element. Greatest element is one of the maximal elements which is connected to all the elements in the post set. Now, you see here, we have two maximal elements, 8 and 12. But, 8 is not connected to 12 and 12 is not connected to 8. So, we cannot choose any greatest element in this. That means, greatest element does not exist. Because these two are incomparable, we cannot decide whether 8 is above or 12 is above, right? That means it does not exist. Now, the least element also, it should be at the lowest, means it should not have any child node. And secondly, it should be connected to all. Now, we find 1. 1 is connected to 2, 1 is connected to 3, connected to 4, connected to 6, connected to 8 and connected to 12. That means, 1 is connected to all the elements and plus it is the lowest element, means it is at the bottom with no child node. So, 1 is the least element here and also the minimal element, right? Let us take one more example. We will take this, uh, consider this figure now. We have to calculate first the maximal element. We have to find those nodes which are not having any parent node. We are having one node like this L, which is which does not have any parent node above that, right? So, that means it is a maximal element. Minimal elements, we have to find those elements which do not have a child node below that. They are A, B, C, D, right? They are not having any child nodes. That means, these all are the minimal elements. Now, the greatest element, this is L and it should be connected to all the elements. Let us check. It is connected to J, H, E, A with this H, right? It is connected to K, I, F, 
B and C through this path. Then K I G to G also to D also. I is connected, L is connected to all the nodes plus it is an uppermost element and there is no parent node in this. That means this is the greatest element. But here we have four minimal elements. But all these elements are incomparable to each other and are not connected to each other. This means we cannot decide which is the lower one and so the least element is phi means it does not exist. Right? Next example, let us consider this figure. Now, the maximal elements means we have to find the elements with no parent node. See here D, C, B, A. There is no upper node to that. Right? So, that means all these four elements are the maximal elements. Now, minimal elements also, node, node which is a child node. F is not having any child, G is also not having, H is also not having and I is also not having. So, these are the minimal elements in this diagram. Now, greatest element out of these elements, we have to decide which is the greatest element. Now, we have four min maximals, but there are not connected to each other, they are incomparable. If we consider D, suppose. D is connected to all elements, but it is not connected to C. D is not connected to B. D is not connected to A. So, that is why we cannot decide D as a greatest element. Similar is the case with the C. C is not connected to D, B and A. So, it is cannot be the greatest element. B, similar is the case with D and A. So, the greatest element does not exist. Now, we will take the least elements. Now, we have four minimals in this and four minimals are not connected to each other. So, we cannot decide which is the minimum one and they are not connected to this one. So, least element also does not exist in this diagram. Now, the upper bounds and the lower bounds. Let A be a subset of a poset. If U is an element of S such that A is related to U for all the elements A belonging to the set, then U is called the upper bound of A. Similarly, if L is an element of S such that L is less than or it is related to A for all the elements A of the set, then L is the called a lower bound of A. In a layman language, I will explain what is an upper bound and what is a lower bound. Now, let us consider the edge, uh, this hash diagram and the edge 2 and 6, right. For the upper bounds, we have to see all the elements above this edge, above this edge and are related to both these elements, right. So, above this edge are 4, 12 and 8. Now, we cannot take 4 number because it is not related to 6. 6 is not related to 4. We cannot, we cannot take 8 because 8 is also not related to 6. Now, we have 12 and 6. Both are related to 2 and 6. 6 is related to 2 and 12 is also related to 2. That means upper bounds are 6 and 12 for this particular edge. right? Now, the lower bounds for the lower bounds, we have to see the lower numbers to that edge. Now, lower R for this is 2, 1 and 3, right? But 3 is not connected to 2. So, we cannot take 3 number. So, the left out numbers are 2 and 1. 1 and 2 are the lower bounds for this particular edge, right? Now, the least upper bound and the greatest lower bound. Let us read out the definition first. Let A be a subset of a poset S. An element X is called the least upper bound of A if X is an upper bound of A and X is related to Z whenever Z is an upper bound of A. Right? 
Let A be the subset of poset S and element X is called the greatest lower bound of A if X is the lower bound of A and Y is related to X whenever Y is a lower bound of A. Now in layman language if you want to understand what is the least upper bound, right? First we will find out the upper bounds, whatever the upper bounds are to that particular edge. Then the least upper bound is the nearest one from both of the number from all the upper bounds we have found, right? Similarly, in the lower bounds, greatest lower bound, it is the first we will find the lower bounds of the edge and then the nearest one to the lower side will be the greatest lower bound of that particular edge. Now, let us consider that example again 2 and 6. We found the upper bounds as 6 and 12, right? Now, from these two numbers, 6 is the nearest to this edge and is related to all these both these two elements, right? That means 6 will be the least upper bound of that particular edge. And from the lower bounds, we found 1 and 2. And 2 is the nearest one. So, that means 2 is the greatest lower bound of that particular edge, right? Let us take one more example. Now, we will consider A1 that is edge uh, elements D and E and for A2 elements B and C. Now, first we consider A1. A1 we have these blue elements D and E, right? Now, for the upper bounds, we will find for D and E, what are the upper bounds? F and G, right? And nearest one is F. So, F is considered as the uh, least upper bound for D and E. But now we consider the lower bound. Lower bound for D and E can be C also, can be B also, right? These two are incomparable elements. Now, we cannot decide which is nearest B or C. That, that means, that means the least, the greatest lower bound does not exist for a1, right? Now, we will take this case B and C, red elements, red elements B and C. We have to see the lower bound that is A and Z and the closest one is A, right? That means A is the least upper bound, sorry, a greatest lower bound. But in the case of upper bounds, we have upper bounds for this, for this are D, E, F, G and the nearest ones are D and E. Again, they are not com in comparable and we cannot have decide that whether D or E. So, it does not exist for A also. Greatest lower bound for A is A2 is A and A2 does not have any least upper bound, right? Now, let us take another example. Consider the poset D30. This is the poset for D30 we have made and find the all lower bounds of 10 and 50. So, this is 10 and 50, right? Now, we have to find out the lower bounds. We will see which numbers are below 10 and 50. They are incomparable. Right? So, we cannot take these elements. So, numbers are 2, 3, 5 and 1. Right? So, which are connected to both? 2, 2 is connected to 10 but not 15. 3, 3 is connected to 15 but not 10. So, we cannot take these ones. 1 is connected to 10 also and 1 is connected to 15 also. So, we can take 1. We take 1. And similarly, 5, 5 is connected to 10, 5 is connected to 15, 5 is also in our selection, right? 1 and 5 will be the lower bounds for 10 and 15. Now, we will see the greatest lower bound. From 10 to 15, right, we found the lower bounds 1 and 5, right? Which is the nearest one among 1 and 5? 1 is lower and 5 is in between. this. So, 5 is nearest to 10 to 15. Then we select 5 for it, right? Now, the upper bounds of 10 and 50, the numbers which are upper to 10 and 15 are 6 and 30. 
right? 6 is related neither related to 10 neither related to 15. So, we have to leave this. Then we are left with 30 only 30, 10 is related to 30, 15 is also related to 30. So, our selection is 30 for the upper bound, right? As we have only one upper bound and that is only the nearest one. So, it is the least upper bound for 10 and 15, right? Now, this example here B1 is A and B, A and B, right? The question is we have to find the least upper bound and greatest lower bound of B1 now. So, now, you can see here for whenever we find out the upper bounds, least upper bounds, we have to find the first intersection of both these and the upper side. See, a and B, both are first intersecting at C. So, C is the least upper bound of B1, right? But if we see the lower bounds now, these are incomparable, but we, their lower bounds does not exist and there, there is no connection between A and B also, right? That means the lower bounds do not exist in this case. Now, we take C, D, E, C, D, E, right? For the upper elements, we have F, H and G, right? And see the intersections this way, this way, this way, this way. Now, uh, these are the first intersections both. Now, these are the least upper bounds both, but they are incomparable again and we no, cannot decide which is the least upper bound, which is nearest. So, it does not exist for C, D, E means for B2 it does not exist, right? And the lower bounds, if we can see the lower bounds, see the first intersection is C, right? C and that means C is the greatest lower bound for these three elements, this set, right? And the upper bound does not exist. Now, we consider another example. Again, there is a set of three elements, 6, 7 and 8. There is a hash diagram showing elements 1 to 11 and their relations, right? And we have to calculate the LUB least upper bound and GLB greatest lower bound for B that is 6, 7 and 10. 6, 7 and 10, right? Now, the first we will see the upper side which is the first intersection here is 10. All the three are intersecting at 10. That is the first intersection. That means the least upper bound is 10. But the lower bounds first, see the first vertex that can be reached from 6, 7, 8 by upward paths is 10, right? Now the lower bounds, see the intersection. First intersection is 7. Uh, sorry, 4, right? The, that means 4 is the element which is the greatest lower bound, right? Which is the nearest to these three elements. So, that means 4 is the greatest lower bound. Now, quickly we will do this example. We will have this figure. Now, we have to calculate the lower bounds. GLB upper bounds and LUB for DEF first. Now, DEF. Now, what is the first intersection? We cannot get the first intersection of 3, all the 3 together. This G is the intersection of D and E, I is the intersection of E and F. So, it does not exist, right? There are though no upper bounds for this. Right? If there are no upper bounds, then there is no least upper bound also. Now, for the lower bounds also, again, we do not have any in intersection of three elements together. There is an intersection of D and F, but E is not intersecting anywhere. So, that means there are no lower bounds and no greatest lower bound. Now, A and C, A and C, they are inter first intersection is H. Right? That means the upper bound is H, only H and the least upper bound is also H. But at the lower part, there is no element. So, no lower bounds and no 
greatest lower bound right now we go to b b and d it, they are now comparable elements right so the first upper one is d and lower one is b right the simple uh, upper one is d and lower one is b right because b is low d is low now the lower bounds if you want to see the first intersection down is b then d and b together at downwards are connected to no other element the so lower bounds b it will be b only and greatest lower bound also b only upper bounds first intersection d then they both these two are having the intersection as uh, g also right c d and g also b is also connected to g d is also connected to g that means g can also be the upper bound but it cannot be the least upper bound because nearest is d d is the least upper bound d and g are the upper bounds right now we come to lattice lattice before we understand lattice we should be very much clear with least upper bounds and greatest lower bounds right so we have done some examples related to that now we are much clear about that now lattice a hash diagram is called a lattice if every pair means if you pick any two elements of the hash diagram and for that two elements we can able to find a least upper bound and greatest lower bound then it is a lattice see let's read the definition a partial ordered set means a post set in which every pair of elements has both a least upper bound which can be called a join and a greatest lower bound which is called meet is called a lattice now in this diagram if we take any two elements we have a least upper bound for that and a greatest lower bound for that but in this case for g and d there is no upper bound there is no least upper bound there exists so that means this is not a lattice and also they are not related to each other there are a few diagrams we where we have to check whether it is a lattice or not now see here this is the first diagram all the elements are connected to each other we can take any two pairs now huh? when we take any two pairs there exists a edge between them that means one of them is the least upper bound and other is the greatest lower bound so we are not to check in this right now if we can this is a lattice automatically it is a lattice now we consider this diagram right all the pairs of vertices which are having an edge we need not to check them means one of them is least upper bound and other one is the greatest lower bound. we have to check only the incomparable elements like b and c right b and c least up there is an intersection there is an intersection below also that means the upper bound and lower bounds are existing for b and c least upper bound greatest lower bound are existing means join and meet are existing for b and c right now let's go to this diagram right in this diagram these f and g f and g if we consider these two elements we cannot find the least upper bound for these two elements so there is no element upper to that which is getting the intersection so that means this is not a lattice right now in this diagram again there are edge existing we have to just see b and d b and d we can see here where is the intersection going this way this way this way and this way right and we are getting the intersection upper side both side that means join and meet are existing for b and d we you can check for any two edges you will find that join and meet are existing for all the two elements so this is a lattice right similarly here in this also we are having join and meet for every two elements b and c we can check this see here for we are getting the first intersection here for b and c that means e is the join of this and a is the meet of this similarly for this join this is the meet for c and d right so this is also a lattice now consider this one if we take 
B and C, right? There is no join for this because we are getting two intersections, right? And both are incomparable, and we can. There is no decision between D and E, which is the join of them. So it is not a lattice. Similarly, here, if we take this one for C and D, we have two decisions to make about the meet. B and A both are incomparable, which is the nearest one we cannot decide it. Then this one is not a lattice. Now come to this one. There is join and meet for every two elements. If you consider, let's consider A and C. A and C, there is an edge between them. A, A is the meet and C is the join. <coughs> let's see. Take C and F. For C and F, where is the intersection going upwards to I, and for downwards it is B. That means their join and meet are existing, and this is a lattice, right? Similarly, you can check for all other pairs of the diagram. Now, the complement of an element in a bounded lattice, right? Complement is what if an element is there. We are finding a complement of that particular element A, suppose, and we have a greatest element, we have a least element in the lattice. Now, if for A there exists some x with A join x, we get the greatest element, and A meet x, we get the lowest element, means the least element, then that x is the complement of A. Now, let us understand about, read out the definition. Suppose L is the bounded lattice with greatest element and the greatest element I and least element O. Let A belongs to L. A is some element that belongs to the lattice. An element A dash, A dash that is belonging to lattice is called a complement of A if A join A dash is the greatest element and A meet A dash is the lowest element. Right now, there are some properties. Complement of the least element is always the greatest element. Complement of greatest element is always the least element. Right, an element A in a bounded lattice need not to have a complement. There can be a case in a lattice that the complement doesn't exist for a particular element. Element A in a bounded lattice may have more than one complements. There can be a case where we have more than one complements for one particular element in a poset or a lattice. Element A in the bounded distributive lattice cannot have more than one complement. If the lattice is distributive in nature, then the element may have no complement or it may have one and only one complement, not more than one. Now, let us uh, consider this example. Now, first we will find now from the diagram itself F is the greatest element and J is the lowest element, right? We are representing the greatest element with I and the uh, lowest element with O, right? Now, first is complement of J we have to find out. Now, complement of J, now we have it is obvious that for O it is I, I is for O. So, these are clear, these are the greatest element and this is the lowest element. Now, we will start from here, complement of A, this A. Now, we have to find out the element with which we can join and we get F, right? Like for example, I, A and I, if we consider these two elements, the where we get the intersection here. That means the join of this is the greatest element, and where we get the intersection of this and the meet of this, we got the least element. That means the complement of A is I, right? We got I. Similarly, now we check for B. For B, right? B and G, if we take B and G, if we take the intersection here, upper side, we get F. And we, if we take the intersection downwards, we get J, right? That means the complement of B is 
G. Also, the same is the case with B and I also. So, B intersection A, J and B upward intersection is F. That means the join of B and I is F, meet of B and I is also J. So, B have two complements G and I because B join G we got F, B join I also we got F, B meet G we got J, B meet I we got J again, right? Similarly is the case for C, D, right? Now is E, Eth element. Eth element V, G is the complement. See, G and E. So, we can see these two elements here, right? Now, see the intersection upwards, we got F. See the intersection downwards, we got G, right? J, that means for E, the complement is G. Now, consider the case of G. Let us consider the case of G. We have to find all the complements of G. First is B, right? See B, G. Because when we calculated of B, B, we got G. For G, we will get B all. Of course, we will get B. For G, we calculated C, right? For C, it was the complement was G. So, for G, it should be C also, right? So, G is common all into all these. 1, 2, 3, 4. That means B, C, D, E will be the complements of G. For I also, we got G here, C here. That means for G, I will be the complement. So, these, these are the complements of G. Similarly, the I complements are these. Now, consider the case of H. This H, right? Now, H, we get the intersection F with G, I. But we do not get the intersection with any of the elements below J. Both of the conditions should be true, join and meet. We are satisfying the condition of join, but there is we H is not able to uh, satisfy the condition of meet. So, that is why there is no uh, complement for H in this. Right? Thank you.